Hey guys, I hope you're up for some travel today. In fact, I hope you're up for some time travel. We are kicking off a brand new series called Who is the Holy Spirit? And in order to do that, we're going to travel back to some true stories that happened in the Bible. We are going to spend this month discovering the gift that Jesus left for us, which is the Holy Spirit. But before we do all that, I want to spend a couple of minutes celebrating another gift that God has given us, and that is our moms. So for you moms out there, uh, grandmas, and ladies who are like moms to us, we want to celebrate you. So we're going to play a little game called Would She Rather? And here's how it works. I'm going to give you two options. And kids, you'll choose the option that you think your mom would choose. And then we're going to give grandmas, moms, whoever's watching with you a chance to answer the question. And you can see if you line up. And one point for every match. Are you ready? Would she rather drink tea or coffee? Would she rather sleep in late or wake up early? I know what I would choose. Would she rather get her hair done or her nails done? Would she rather live in the country or live in the city? Would she rather text you a message or call you on the phone? Would she rather go camping or go to the beach? Would she rather read a book or watch a movie? Would she rather go to Paris or go to Rome? Would she rather go out or have people over? I hope you guys had fun with that. Kids, I wanna encourage you to love on and spoil your moms and grandmas today because they are just one of God's greatest gifts to us. So let's spend some time thinking about God and the great gift giver that he is. Let's worship him in song. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in him. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in him. Sing that again. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. And so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. May the God of hope fill you with joy, fill you with peace as you trust in Him. And so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the God joy fill you with peace as you trust in him may the god of hope fill you with joy fill you with peace as you trust in him when you go outside on a windy day can you see the wind then how do you know it's there well that is a lot like the holy spirit 
just like the wind outside or the wind coming from a fan, you can't see it, but you know it's there. The Holy Spirit guides and travels with us when we have to make tough choices. Today, we are going to hear about one of Jesus' friends named Philip. Philip was a special friend of Jesus' called a disciple. And a disciple is a follower of Jesus. Let's use our special time travel device to take us to today's Bible story. Are you ready? All right, everybody stand up. And here's how we're gonna travel back to our Bible story. Okay, with me, we're gonna turn two times, blink three times, jump up and sit down. All of us together, we're gonna go back in time now. Are you ready? One, two, three, turn around. Oh, two times. Blink, one, two, three, jump up and down. All right, we're back in Acts 8, 6 through 40. You can read this in your Bible, but for now, I'm gonna show you a little clip that tells the story about Philip. Stories of the Bible, Philip and the Ethiopian. This is Philip, Hello. who was one of Jesus' disciples. Yep. Philip preached the good news of Jesus in many places. One day, an angel of the Lord spoke to him and said, go south down the desert road. I hear that. So Philip started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia. The man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning to Ethiopia. He was in his carriage reading the book of Isaiah out loud. Hey there. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Okay, I can do that. Philip ran over and heard the man reading and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, How can I, unless someone teaches me? Come on up here. And he urged Philip to come up into the carriage and sit with him. Those parts here. The Ethiopian asked Philip, Tell me, was Isaiah talking about himself or someone else? So beginning with this scripture in Isaiah, Philip told the Ethiopian the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water. Wait, 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 hold on. And the Ethiopian said, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop. Stop. And they went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away and took him to another town. The Ethiopian never saw Philip again, but went on his way rejoicing. The Holy Spirit of God told Philip to go to a place in the middle of nowhere. And Philip didn't ask why. He just agreed to go, just like that. When he arrived, he met a person from Ethiopia. And this guy was a really important guy because you know what he did? He was the treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. This man brought with him on the trip a big chunk of the Hebrew scripture, which that's what we call the Old Testament today. And specifically the book of Isaiah, he was reading it aloud. Even though he was well-educated and worked for the queen, the man still didn't understand what he was reading. It didn't make any sense to him. Have you ever read something that you didn't understand? Well, Philip heard the man reading and he approached him and asked, do you understand what you're reading? You see, Philip had heard the Holy Spirit's voice telling him to help someone. And even though he was a little nervous, he helped the man because Philip knew this was what the Holy Spirit wanted him to do. Isn't that story amazing? And we know it's true because it's in the Bible and the Bible is true. This is our time traveler pod. And I mean, there's something in here, let me see. Got it. This is our big idea. Uh-oh, there's more. <laughs> you ready for this? The Holy Spirit helps us 
want to know God. That is our big idea for today. Hey, old chicken nuggets, it's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends. Talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hi there, kiddos. It's so good to see y'all today. I've had an awesome week. Earlier this week, I went to my Maymaw's house to see all the things she had in her basement. Oh, don't worry. She told me I couldn't. She said there was a lot of things in there that she would pass down to me one day. As soon as I walked in, I found a dollar on the ground. Turns out it was just a piece of chocolate, though which was awesome. Then I found a list of New Year's resolutions I made a year ago. New Year's resolutions are things that you want to get better at or complete by the end of the next year. I used to write them and send them to my mama ever since I was a kid. Turns out she kept them all in one box. And oh man, did I make some great resolutions. Mind if I read them out loud? I'll read them anyway. I put them all on the interweb. <laughs> Number one, gain five pounds. You see, a lot of people want to lose weight, but I figure I should gain some weight. A couple of cheeseburgers and bam, <laughs> I was there. Easiest resolution ever. Number two, quit spending so much money. I did great with this goal. Knocked it out of the park. Sure, maybe because I had no money, but hey, <laughs> I did it. New Year's resolution number three, only believe in what you see. Now this is a good one. You see, I heard that phrase a long time ago from someone very old and very wise. Only believe what you can see. But I feel like I haven't done a good job of that. So let's try. But first I gotta think of things that we believe in that we can't see. All right, gravity. What is gravity? It's what makes everything fall? All right, well, I refuse to believe in gravity. All right, electricity. All right, I'm gonna look straight up into the lights to prove I don't believe in electricity. Yeah, that's not a good idea. All right, last one, air. Now people say air is super important, but <laughs> you can't even see it. So you heard it here first. I, Carl, do not believe in air. <gasps> Carl, what's going on, man? Look, man, it's been a long time, man. How you been doing? Carl, Carl, I, I, I said, how are you? How are you doing? Carl, Carl, blink twice if you need help, bro. Blink. Carl, breathe, man. Breathe. <sighs> bro, what in the world are you doing? What is, what is going on? I don't believe in air. What do you mean you don't believe in air? Well, I've made the decision. I'm not believing in anything I can't see. <laughs> oh, man. DJ, why are you laughing? I'm sorry, bro. That's just the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. <laughs> you don't believe in air. Uh, uh, I don't believe. <laughs> you, you're crazy, Carl. You're crazy, man. <laughs> What's so funny? Carl, we have to believe in things we don't see. That's just life. Really? Okay. What about the Holy Spirit? What about it? Well, he is something we can't see, and you better believe he's real. Look, open up your Bibles to Acts 8. Should we read it? Let's go! Holy moly, that was, wow! Pretty cool, right? Cool, that's incredible. I mean, you have Philip, right? A man who loves Jesus, being told by the Holy Spirit to go south on a road, then he sees another man from Ethiopia who was reading the book of Isaiah. Yep, and then the Spirit told Philip to go meet him. But the thing is, the Ethiopian couldn't understand what he was reading, so Philip helped him and got to explain the good news of Jesus. Then after a while, they passed a body of water and the Ethiopian realized there's no reason that he has to wait to get baptized. He wanted to make the decision to follow Jesus right then and right there. Right, so they walked down to the water and Philip baptized the Ethiopian. Then out of nowhere, Philip was taken by the Holy Spirit to a completely different place. I know, this is incredible. I guess I was wrong. Oh, you mean about the whole believing only what you can see thing? Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize how powerful the Holy Spirit is. Of course. 
Jesus promised us that he would send the Holy Spirit when he went up to heaven. The Holy Spirit makes us strong and helps us. Help us how? <laughs> With everything. Like when you're upset, the Holy Spirit will comfort you. When we need wisdom, the Holy Spirit will give it to us. And when we need help understanding God better, the Holy Spirit is right there to help. Wow, that's really good news. Because I have a lot of questions about my faith and about God. So the Holy Spirit will help me? Absolutely, Carl. The Holy Spirit helps us to want to know God. Great. <laughs> Wait, that's our big idea. Today's big idea is the Holy Spirit helps us to want to know God. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. The Holy the Spirit Holy helps us, Spirit want, to helps us to want to know yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Hey, TJ, I really like that story. Man, me too, man. It's one of my favorites. I can see why. But you know, TJ, I'm still not sure of this whole electricity thing. Really? Why? I don't know. It just seems like kind of suspicious. Whoa, what What happened? Well, I didn't believe in electricity, so I just stopped paying the electric bill to see what would happen. Turns out it gets really dark. Oh, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. <laughs> hey kids, y'all have a good week. We'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of The man from Ethiopia was looking to know God better. And that's why God sent Philip to answer his questions and help him to understand more about God. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but we can see what the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. Let us pray and then we will end our time together by looking at a memory verse. Dear God, thank you for allowing us to know you. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit to help us to understand and know you better. I pray that we will want to know you more and more and more every day, and that we will encourage others and tell others about you. It's in your son's name we pray, amen. Hello, my name is Maria, and today I will be reading Romans 8.14 in English and then in Spanish. So, it says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And now in Spanish, Romanos 8.14 Porque todos los que son guiados por el Espíritu de Dios son hijos de Dios.